I've had quite a few questions about the rubber band powered cars that I've made already and I'm going to try and answer some of those questions by making one more. I'm going to use some of the innovations, um, ideas that came to me when I've been making some of these other cars, try and combine them all in one car, if that's possible. I'm going back to my original idea of using this plastic conduit, oval conduit, it's the sort of stuff that electricians use for putting cables in the walls before they're plastered. I bought a bundle of these, I think there's about 10 in the bundle, when I was doing some electrical work and I've got a, a lot of them left over. I think I only used one or two from the actual bundle originally. So that's why I keep using these. It's lightweight um, and it's quite rigid so it's quite handy for making the chassis. I'm also going to try and use, well, I always seem to use CDs for the wheels. I'll probably use CDs again, but I'll also have a go and see if I can use some of these, which are old 45 records as they're called, So I've got a few of them to play with. I've even got some LPs. So I might even use them as well. The idea is to make a model car that I can change the wheels on relatively easily. So framework, basic chassis is going to be that. Got some ball pens, as they're called, uh, or at least the tubes from them. I'll use them for cross members. Uh, I've got some, these are actually cut out of what I would call flip-flop shoes, They're foam shoes and I've cut some discs out of them. I used them in some of my previous cars, um, I might use bits of them for various purposes. The ax axles for the cars, I've got some square section dowel there which I used on another car, just happens to be the right width for going on records, so I can use that as an axle. I've also got some thicker wooden dowel, which I found happens to be just the right size for a CD. probably use milk bottle tops again to mount the CDs if I use them. And some garden cane, that's a bamboo cane I think. That was also quite useful for axles so I may even use some of them as well. So there's quite a selection of bits I'm going to use there. Got a little jar full of rubber bands, I'm going to use them. Uh, one of my designs used this is a 35mm film um, container, which as you can see has already got some holes drilled through it. I used that on one of my designs. Hopefully I might use that as well. I've got my cordless drill, which has currently got a flat battery in it, so I'm going to have to charge that up. Hot glue gun, I always use my hot glue gun. Selection of drill bits. Um, when you do drill holes in this plastic, if you're not careful it will actually shatter. So you have to start off with some small drill bits and work your way up. So that's one thing worth noting. And that's about it. Uh, probably use a knife and a saw, that sort of thing. Oh, I'll also be using, this is just some scrap plywood that I've got. It's quite, uh, quite soft stuff, quite easy to cut, but 
to probably be using that as well. So there, it's going to be quite a mixture of different bits and pieces. As I say, the idea is so that I can build a basic car that we can actually change the wheels on to see if we can get different performance out of it. One of the common questions I get is what are the dimensions? Um, and my answer is fairly evasive usually. Um, for example, this strip of uh, conduit is just an odd piece that was left in the garage. If I measure it, it's actually 820 millimetres long. Now, that just happens to be the piece that's there. And if I want half of it, I'll make it into two sides. Half of 820 is 410. So all I'm going to do is cut that in half. No other reason for that dimension. sides of the chassis and in this case it will be 410 millimeters long. Next question is what's the width? Well I use ball pen tubes, tubes out of ball pens, to make the cross members. So that tells you how wide they're going to be. Basically, whatever length I can get from the ball pen tube. Now, some of them, it's worth noting, um, they're wide at one end and either sealed at the other end or thinner at the other end. So, you have to be a bit careful what you select. In fact, these I think are a little bit wide. The ideal ones, At least I find these are the best ones. I like this because you can actually see what's inside them. And something like a bit of garden cane will work as an axle inside, but straight away you can see I'm going to need to cut the end off there because it won't go all the way through. But other than that, it's a constant diameter inside. So off about there somewhere. Some of these bits of plastic shatter when you cut them so you have to be a bit careful which ones you select. And that one will need trimming off because I've made a fairly rough job of that. general idea so the front end I'll drill holes through that'll pass through as the front axle or at least the tube for the front axle and then we'll have the wheels on there and that's our front axle sorted next question will be exactly where do we mark the holes? Well for the front, just a reasonable distance back so we don't actually split. So I don't know if you want a dimension, let's just say let's say 25 millimeters. When I come to drill my holes, I'll drill them 25mm back from that end, 
at the other end, it does depend a bit on where you're going to mount the wheels. Whether you're going to have them on the outside of the chassis or on the inside. If you're going to have them on the inside, then obviously that cross member can't be any further back than the width of half of your wheel. So, on the assumption, if I was going to actually put the wheel or the axle through there somewhere, then the strengthening cross member that I put in has got to be about there somewhere. Okay, I won't mark those up yet because I'll actually measure them from that end to make sure that they're the same distance back. If you get it wrong, if you get one further back than the other, it will twist and your car won't go straight. Just to quickly show you where we're going with this, I'll use some that I've made earlier in the good old tradition. This CD with bottle tops stuck either side to give a hub. Got the cane there for the axle, and that would go through one of the pen tubes like that. As you can see, this axle is actually a little bit short to use on this particular model. But that's just to give you an idea of where we'll be going. So that would be glued across there. And that's your front axle and your wheels. Another thing I'm going to do on this particular car is use a, an innovation I worked out on one of my other cars where the back axle is actually going to be held in place on a, well this is a T-shaped piece of plywood that actually slots in to the back so straight away see the back axle there. That's something I didn't do on the first car, but I've done on some of the later ones. And it's a convenient way of being able to change your axle, change your wheels. You just pull them straight off the back and you can put something else on. So this isn't actually the one I'm going to use on this car, but these little T-shaped pieces, which you probably can't see very clearly in this video, I'm going to make them and use them so to go in the back there. It's a convenient way of adding the axle to the tube. I may even use them on the front as well. Right, because I want to make this car as multi-purpose as possible, I've decided that the back strengthening cross member I'm going to allow the width of a 45 record so it's going to be about there to be mounted on the inside um, just in case I want to mount it on the inside so I'm preparing it so there's enough space for it even though I may or may not use it so that puts that 325 from the front edge. If we allow a little bit for the width of the um, cross member, we'll call it 320 back from the front. 320. Again, these dimensions are purely based on the length of the piece of plastic I've got and nothing else. Okay, so we're going to have to drill some holes now. Before I drill the holes, I'm going to use this, it's called a braddle, or that's what I call it anyway, to put little holes through, just to guide the drill bit. So if you're not careful when you're drilling this, it will actually split or shatter. 
it's best to make several, use several drill bits. And you work your way up. Make sure you're drilling onto a bit of scrap wood so you don't drill a hole through your table. If you're doing this in school or college, you may have access to a vertical drilling platform that will make sure you get all your holes through at a nice vertical. get any problems with it going off at an angle. Obviously I'm not doing that. Right, rather than waste time you watch me doing that, I'll jump forward a bit. I have found in the past, because this can split when you're drilling it, the last few sizes I actually ream it out by using the drill in my hand, not even using the power drill. And obviously what we're aiming for is for that to go in there. It can be a reasonably tight fit. If you make it too tight, it will split as you're trying to do it. If it's fairly loose in there, it probably doesn't matter, because if you're going to hot glue it in place anyway, it will stay there. There you go, that's just the right size. Now, I'm not going to tell you what dimension the drill bit is, because it depends what size plastic tube you've got. That's all I'm doing, I'm just gently reaming the hole out <coughs> until it's the size I want it to be, to avoid any chance of it splitting. If you're using something other than this plastic conduit, then obviously you'd treat it differently. A piece of wooden dowel would have different characteristics to this plastic. See those tubes, a little bit wider. See that one's, that one's thinner. So it depends entirely on what ball pen tube you're using. So that one's just fits. Right, I'll just do a, a quick assembly so you can see how it's going to look. This isn't the finished article. But it will give you an idea of where we're going with this. That's the general chassis, so I have pushed it together carefully, that's just to give you an idea. And if I stick that through the front end, obviously this is just to give you an idea of how it will look. Shove that. No effort to do that neatly. That's just to give you a rough idea of what the end target will be. And I've left enough space there so that if I want to, I could use these wheels or even potentially LPs, which will be up here somewhere. Before I actually hot glue the bits together for the chassis, just a quick little demonstration. If you find that you haven't actually got your holes drilled perfectly um, parallel, all you need to do is push them close together, stick your drill bit through and ream it out a little bit more so you've actually got a bit of 
play in there because when you actually put your axle tube through or your cross member as this one is it's not going to matter too much you can actually use the hot glue and the play to actually get it how you want it so if you if your holes were drilled like that ream it out a bit so you've got a bit of play in there and then when you hot glue it together you'll be able to get them just right obviously not this close together that'd be out like this somehow okay I should get my hot glue gun warmed up and we'll do that easier if they're a tight fix, it won't all together while you're working on it, but it's not absolutely essential. So we just stick a little dollop of hot glue on. Just hold it in place. the tube sticking on the outside so we've got something to hot glue on to. Let that cool for a few seconds and I'll put a bit more on. Right, before I, the hot glue's dried I've just remembered on one of my Cars. I actually had this on the front, so I'm going to add that and explain why later. Um, but obviously, if the hot glue's dried, you're a bit stuck if you want to add that piece. <laughs> 